Devlog number nine. I'm in a situation again where I planned to do one thing and another thing entirely happened. So we're not really going to be doing any level design today. Uh, I kind of got sucked into a big refactor and rework of a bunch of stuff. Taking this mechanics button to its logical conclusion. So I showed this last time. I added this thing that lets you examine the speed formula and elemental damage adjustments. Um, and kind of had the beginning of something else going here on, I'm in test scenario one. Um, we'll look at the showcase after this. Um, so you notice there aren't as many things on this screen. There were some buttons here. They're gone now. I've replaced all of that interface, the stats list, uh, which I was working on last time to add the resources in there. Uh, the actions, the abilities, whatever I had in there, it's all gone. And now this new pop-up uh, has replaced it. This is not in its final form. It's added more clicks in between like where you want to be and what you want to do. Um, but it's a step in the right direction. It's just not all the way there yet. Uh, so anyway, if you want to add this available warrior to your party, you come in here and you'd go add to party. You want to move it around or remove it from the party. Let's go to a place that has more, uh, more slots. So like add to party, add to party, you know, if I want to move it up or down, I can move down, uh, I can move up. Yeah, again, not in its final form, but it's uh, it's on its way somewhere. Uh, so if I want to inspect an enemy, for example, let's go to stats. So kind of the big thing, boy, that's kind of way off on the right. And also, where is your... Something's missing here. This is supposed to have a little pop-up tail pointing at that. I think I know exactly what went wrong. This one has it. Okay, well, I'll debug that later. Yeah, you're in a weird place. Like, look how much space there is between these two. This is, like, that many pixels. This is more. Okay, something's wrong with the, the layout of this. I, I vaguely know what it is. Uh, I can, I'll fix it on my own. Don't worry about it. Anyway, um, so hang on. Let's back up a little bit. Yeah, I've made this harder for myself. <laughs> work in progress. This is why I'm not doing any uh, scenario work today, because, like, my mind's just not going there. I'm, I'm deep in this, uh, this rework. So the big feature here is you can go to a list of stats. I was talking about, well, a lot of things. So I had this list of stats that had, like, you know, champion's name and icon up at the top, then resources listed, then all the stats, then all the properties... Uh, and abilities. Those are all in separate lists now. Whoa. No, that, that looks fine. Uh, so I can see lists of all of those. You don't have any properties at this point. Those are your abilities. So those will not get intermingled at all anymore. If I go to like abilities, I can look at this again. Uh, looks pretty familiar. That's all the same. Uh, some minor changes. So properties, right, you don't have any resources, health, warrior only has health, has a capacity of six. I changed a thing here where the change per turn doesn't show its um, formula pop-up, like I, I just can't even click on that uh, anymore, uh, if it is just a simple constant. Like if the formula just says the change is the constant integer of zero, and it doesn't like pull from any... Um, stats or do any math on it or anything, then it just won't even show this window. So uh, even though it is a formula in the scenario JSON file, it looks just like it's an integer here. Um, should be indistinguishable. Anyway, yeah, so if you don't see this formula icon, then there's nothing more complicated behind this value. It just is zero and is always zero. However, the six is the actor's health max. Um, your health max stat feeds into that formula. So anyway, the big feature here I talked about wanting to do this. You can do it now. I can point at any stat here and say, where is this used? There is a health formula. Hmm, I don't really identify this as a resource. Oh, and I'm... No, wait, right. Okay, so yeah, this is a resource. I should somehow identify that this is a champion resource because it could be used by other formulas that are not related to resource capacity. But anyway, the health capacity uses health max in its calculation. So I can look up any stat and say, like, what formula uses this? This is just the scenarios. Oh, this one shows... Right, because I go straight to the, that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, scenario's speed formula uses the speed stat. Strength is used by the attack ability. This does say zero. Um, I don't have the data coming all the way along through all of these pop-ups of like who is using this attack, and it's a little ambiguous. Like just because a stat called strength exists and is used somewhere in the formula for attack, um, do I know that that necessarily means this champion is using the attack ability and is the actor in this scenario? What if they're the target of the attack um, uh, action and that uses one of these stats? I don't know. There's there's some stuff to figure out there. But anyway, I wanna, I'll want i figure it out somehow so that this shows an actual number um, because that's just the base value as if uh, the strength were zero. Uh, everything, all the values just default to zero if I'm showing, showing it like that. Anyway, so I think this is super cool. The focus stat uh, is used by all of these spells. Fire uh, adds actor's focus to the base value. Mm -hmm. Venom applies venom status, whose power formula uses the actor focus. So that's buried pretty deep in there. That's the, the power of the status effect that is applied by casting this spell. Um, expiration. Oh, hey, that's a constant. That should be non-interactive. Okay, so I didn't apply that to this. All right. Uh, this is non-constant, so that should show the formula. Uh, range should be a formula. Everything that's an integer should really be. Uh, resource costs should be. Haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah, so I've just sort of been chasing the trail of, like, listing out formula usage for anything that can play into a, a formula's calculation. And that's been kind of a lot of work. I had a weird weekend, but I, I found the time to work on this some. Um, and that's just, <laughs> that's where all of my thoughts are right now. So I'm not, not thinking about other stuff that I was planning. Oh, and in addition to looking at stats for that, you can do it with properties too, by the way. Uh, let's add you to the party. Equip that weird sword that gives you the test property property and see that no formula uses it. If there were formulas here, it would it would show up with a list of them just like it does with those things. Uh, resources don't work the same way. Uh, okay, anyway. Um, so, right, if I go to equipment here for you, uh, then I can actually just change uh, and equip stuff. However, in the available champions or with an enemy, no, an enemy just lists out what it has equipped, which is nothing. Even though it looks like it's holding a little trident. Hmm. Well, I'll probably change this icon. It's way too dark. This is all black. All my icons are black and white, but it's black on a dark color, so that doesn't show up well. That bothers me every time I look at it. For an available champion, since you can't equip them, they don't come with equipment, uh, you can just look at their equipment slots and see that in hand one, I can equip a sword. That's the only item in the scenario that exists that can go in that slot. You can also go in your other hand if you want to. You can put a wizard hat on your head. The body has armor and mage robe. Um, with those effects. Uh, there are no accessories in this uh, scenario yet, even though I've created a, a slot for them. I was planning, didn't get that far. Two items are potion and gradual potion. Oh, I haven't shown this. This is in the time mage challenge, um, which we haven't actually done. Should do that someday. Anyway, uh, spells, these are all the spells you can put in any slot. Let me go on a little tangent real quick, because I want to talk about it now. Because this is listing everything in the scenario. I don't think I have a mage robe right now. I don't. It's an item that exists. Um, so yeah, little tangent about information completeness, since this is all that's all related to the work that I'm doing here. Uh, I do want it to be possible to see... Um, everything that is in the entire scenario, you know, you start your first encounter, you say, okay, so I have a mage with uh, a slot called accessories. What are all the accessories I could get in the future that could go there? I want that to be possible, but I want it to be optional. I want also there to be a different mode to this game where you can say, you know what? I like to be able to be surprised by the scenario uh, designer. If they want uh, something like this to be a surprise when I get that accessory later, I don't want to know about it yet. I don't think I've actually shown this preferences screen. Let's see what it actually looks like. I haven't looked at it in ages, but yeah, okay. So I got these 
checkbox graphics that I copied from another project. They don't fit the visual style of this very well at all. Eh, actually, that does fit. Never mind. Huh. It's a little larger than I might like. A uh, different sort of anti-aliasing style than I use here. But anyway, uh, so that does as you'd expect. This does as you'd expect. I'm not going to hit it because... Okay, right. I'm actually not in full screen mode now, <laughs> even though it looks like I am. Uh, I'm in... You know what? Let's not go on that tangent. Don't mind that this box is unchecked and I am in full screen mode. I'll talk about that some other day. However, true complete information. I'll probably have this default to off. But if you come to preferences and check this box, I'll add a, a description here of some sort. If you check this box, nothing will ever be hidden from you. I'll still have a system where you can have like encounters locked. You know, you have to get encounters one and two done before three unlocks, for example. Um, this this whole screen is going to re be replaced by some sort of hierarchical branching thing. Like think of, you know, Baba is You or Snakebird or something like that, where you complete a level on a map. You see, oh, OK, so I did puzzle number one. I've unlocked one and two. All right. So I could go to two that unlocked four. I could have gone to three that unlocked also unlocked four you know, unlocks a certain number ahead or something. Uh, so the locking mechanism will stay, still stay in place. But with the true complete information checkbox checked, you'll be able to inspect all of the encounter rewards for everything upcoming. Um, see, like, you know, read the lore before you've earned it. Uh, see all of the everything. And if you go to, like, where was I? I was here. If you go to the equipment slots for the accessories, see every accessory or, you know, body-worn thing or item that would be in the entire scenario uh, that you could get. If you have that box unchecked, this is unimplemented. I'm just saying how I intend for it to work. Uh, you know, this sets a Boolean that I can check at runtime to change the way I display things. But right now, actually, I think I do read that for one thing. So with this checked, if I look at Encounter 4, that gives me Test Lore 2 and I can read it here. If I uncheck it, oops, test lore 2, yeah, I can't point at this and mess with it. I'm, I'm moving my gamepad and nothing's happening, uh, and I can't actually read that lore. I can see that I get it, but I can't read it, so all I see is the title. That, I think, is the only thing in the game that actually pays attention to this value yet. But more things will, and one of those things will be the listing of equipment, um, here. So this would list out only things you have seen if that box is not checked. So yeah, I think that gives me pretty much the best of both worlds. I can have, um, I can have true complete information, but for people who want to be surprised, which I figure is most players, uh, who are playing this for the first time, at least, you know, if you're playing it again, you know, if you experience this, you're like, I've seen all the surprises. I know what's going on. I'm doing a replay. I want to see everything so I can plan for the future. Um, then yeah, you can check that checkbox and see everything. So think of like Drought RPG as another example. Um, in that game, I would often do like one exploratory run through a level just to get all the rooms on the map so I could see the layout of everything. Then do a second run with uh, having scouted ahead and seen that information and use that to plan ahead for... Um, boy, it is bothering me. <laughs> Things bother me every time I look at this. It's bothering me how these two icons come together. It's like this head almost fits on these shoulders, but you have two sets of shoulders there. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do about that, but it's fine. Here. Your head. Oh, well, I can't actually equip that. Here. Your head is now replaced by a hat. That hat comes all the way down to the bottom of your chin. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, right. Uh, complete information will change... Um, the setting will change what shows up on this screen. But yeah, uh, so it uh, would also apply to the formulas. Like, this is going to be trickier to determine. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. I will know whether you've seen any of these, just because it's a different category of thing. So yeah, I need to mark what category of thing this is, because, like, just the icon and the name doesn't necessarily say, this is a spell. Any of these could be abilities or items or something else entirely. Because, like, that's an element. Yeah, there are a lot of categories of things that can show up here. I guess a thing I could do is, like, add a second icon or just replace this icon with, like, a spell icon to say this is a spell. 
Or I could say like used by fire spell. Spell colon fire. Speed formula. Ability attack. I don't know. I'll think about what to do there. I'll come up with something. Some convention for showing what kind of thing this is. But anyway, yeah, I think it's super cool that I can see every formula that uses each thing uh, when I point at it. So you look at the stats screen, you can actually know what all of these numbers mean and every implication in the entire scenario of them. Or if you don't have the complete information checkbox checked, uh, every uh, usage of it that is relevant to you at that point. So yeah, you know, you do an encounter, uh, see a new mechanic, ooh. So that would need to be, hmm. Instead of like encounters you've cleared, that would have to be encounters you can see and or have looked at. Ooh, that is a subtle distinction. Like if encounter four, hmm, yeah, there's a lot to think about here. Like if, if a thing is unlocked and I can look at it, I do want to see at least among the things that are unlocked, even with the checkbox unchecked, maybe there will be different thresholds of it. Yeah, 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 that's right. That is part of the plan. So instead of just a binary choice, uh, there will be different levels of complete information. Uh, so there's show everything, there's show most things, but preserve some surprise, and there's preserve all the surprise. So like an unclear encounter would not show you any of its rewards. You'd have to go in and try to do it to, uh, to see what you'd get for it. I think it's a better experience to at least know what you'll get in the unlocked ones so that you can plan like, uh, well, I got these three encounters. They all seem super hard. I don't know what I need to get any of them done. But if I look at the rewards for, you know, this encounter over here uh, and see that, okay, I get a fire sword there. And both of these two have like things that are weak to fire in them. Uh, I'll think, okay, maybe I should focus my efforts here so that I don't try to do something that might be unsolvable over there. But like to support the other experience, I want to, I want to make it possible to just say, well, got these three encounters. Don't know what I'll get as a reward for any of them, if anything. So we just have to figure out which one to do. Right. Um, oh yeah. So on this screen, I can also see the same information. Uh, no, no, I have to be, go to a champion here. You give me a champion reward. There we go. So this pops up that same uh, new champion detail list view is the internal name for this. So champion detail list view shows stats. This shows as if it's an available champion. Uh, so you'll see the equipment slots instead of the equipment that you can actually change. Um, but whatever can go in those. There's a lot of internal details of this that I could talk about, but they're probably not that interesting, but <laughs> they are the things that took the most of my time. This is complicated. You know, each one of these little windows that pops up has to be, you know, has its own source file and a uh, way of calculating its number of rows and what goes in each one and which icon is drawn where and what action is taken, which rows are interactive. You know, this is interactive. This is drawn centered. This is non-interactive. You've seen a little bit of my UI code. I went over that super briefly last time. So yeah, had to implement a lot of those. And you know, if there's nothing in the list, you have to still say, all right, if your number of list items is zero, Make it one and draw this gray, no properties, non-interactive text. <laughs> anyway, it's been a lot of work, but it's uh, it's good. One thing that is not done yet. Uh, uh, this should still work. I don't think I've broken anything there. One thing that is not done yet is doing this for the battle screen. What? No, no, this is encounter setup. <laughs> I was very confused. The screens, no, they don't look the same. It's just been... Uh. <laughs> It's been a long day. Yeah, so this still shows the old one. So this old list that has the resources up here and the stats there that you can't point at, abilities, properties, this thing is just going away entirely. Uh, and in the battle screen will be replaced by that thing on the other two screens. Anyway, yeah, so uh, still kind of in the middle of that. Yeah, like that's an example of uh, a way in which this is not done yet. Still have, you know, this UI mess to clean up, uh, target selection. That's one of the reasons I'm not doing any scenario design uh, today. Uh, right, I was going to show how this manifests in showcase scenario. So like protector has those stats. Vitality is used by health. That hasn't come along, but don't worry about it. It will. Uh, oh yeah, uh, changes by zero per turn. But if I look at... No, no, okay, so resources. Here we go. So capacity 10, active vitality. Changes by zero per turn. 
Energy changes by one per turn. Capacity is five. Neither of these has an inspectable formula because they are both simple, constant integers. Just uh, when I set up the formula, I just said assign const five or add const five, whichever way it was. Either one of those is just a, a simple constant value, which doesn't need to be inspected because there's nothing more that, to it than the number you see there. Uh, so if you see this little formula icon here, this F parentheses, that means there's something more to it and it reads some parameter that you might want to look at to get a look at the mechanics if you care. I don't have an idea right now like how much of the game, the ultimate game experience, is going to be... Um, <laughs> I'm going to interrupt myself to say another thing that's been bothering me. These little notes I make are mostly for myself. Another thing that's been bothering me is the background color of this tail. It doesn't match exactly. Like this color doesn't bleed over to that. And I'm not sure this one does either. There's like an optical illusion going on here. That's annoying to fix though but I'm probably going to do it. Anyway, uh, I have no idea where I was. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Anyway, so that's what this uh, information window looks like for the test scenario. Got the shoot and volley, all those things. Yeah, this is a simple constant minus five. Looks like positive five there, but it's minus five because this word is decreases. Had to do a bunch of work to get that to work. Anyway, <laughs> just mumbling to myself about things I've been doing over the last... I, I had a weird weekend. Okay, anyway, so uh, that's the new thing. Uh, if I can get all that stuff done, maybe I'll be in a situation where I can add the, the target selector because, like, I need to be able to select targets for, um, for like, this stuff for uh, the rest of this to make sense because I want to add a healer champion who can target specific things to keep them up. Um, just make this particular situation more complicated. Anyway, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll see you next time when this is a little bit better put together, I guess.